In German tax law, as a self-employed individual, you basically have two choices for calculating your profit. And there are indeed variations in terms of when and how each option should be subject to taxation. The options are first and foremost the income surplus calculation and secondly the profit and loss statement along with the balance sheet. What exactly it is, what the differences are, and what is more favorable for you, we will now examine in detail. The initial method of profit determination, and honestly also by far the simpler method, is the calculation of surplus from income. And as the name implies, in the first step, you add up all of the income and then calculate the surplus of income over expenses in order to determine the financial outcome. In English, this means we first add up all the income you had within a year, then we add up all the expenses you had within a year, and then we calculate income minus expenses, which is your profit or loss if the expenses were higher. This whole calculation is relatively simple. It's a simple addition and subtraction. And what is very important at this point is that the cash flow principle applies. What does that mean? An expense or income is only relevant when it flows in or out. This implies that what transpires in the account is articulated in plain and straightforward language. That means you only have to pay taxes on an invoice once it has been paid to you and you have the money in your account. On the other hand, you can only deduct expenses once you have actually paid them. So if you issue an invoice that is never paid to you, you also never have to pay taxes on it. On the other hand, you are unable to deduct invoices from taxes if you do not make payment for them. What is completely irrelevant in the entire calculation of the income surplus calculation and therefore completely neutral for the profit are the private deposits and withdrawals, meaning all transactions you make with yourself, that is private withdrawals. When you transfer money from the business account to the personal account, it has no impact on taxes. The same applies vice versa. That means with income surplus calculation, you primarily examine all the business transactions of your business account, then verify in the end whether more or less has been generated. Much more detailed, on the other hand, is the balance sheet or the profit and loss statement. It is not only about credits and debits in the bank account, but rather about the principle of cash flow, as there are receivables and liabilities involved in the process. That means if I, for instance, invoice you for an amount, I initially provide a service, then I send you an invoice, and with this invoice, I have a claim against you, and then hopefully you make a payment for the invoice at some point, and then this claim is essentially resolved. And that is the process that you follow in the field of accounting. You first record the receivables and liabilities, so first the invoice and then the payment, thus balancing these receivables and liabilities. This means that you essentially book each business transaction twice, once for the actual provision of the service and once for the payment. And if I now say you record it twice, it's also quite likely that the whole thing is called double entry bookkeeping. So whenever you hear double entry bookkeeping, you know, okay, it's about accounting. The downside to this is, firstly, it naturally involves a lot more work because I have to handle each case twice. Secondly, this can lead to the situation where once I have created my invoice and sent it to you, it is already tax relevant. This means that I may have to pay taxes on revenues where I have not yet received the money. Even the work you do yearly is much more complex for accountants, that is for the profit and loss statement. In the income surplus calculation, it actually only leads to the EUR attachment, which then becomes an attachment in your income tax return. That means it's relatively simple. For those who prepare balance sheets, you must conduct an inventory. This means you must actually list the inventory of assets your company truly possesses and its liabilities. That means you may need to go to your storage, check what finished and unfinished work you have, how much office supplies you still have, how much technical equipment you have, etc and you have to create a list about it, and then you also check, for example, what you have in the account, how many receivables, how many liabilities, etc. And from that, you then build a balance sheet with assets and liabilities, etc. In this process, there are also many rules that you must additionally consider. Suddenly, the German commercial code, known as the HGB, comes into play. You'll notice that creating a balance sheet is significantly more complex, but you also have more room for maneuver, meaning you can create provisions, etc. Not possible with income surplus calculation, and as a person who prepares balance sheet, you also have more chances to potentially save on taxes. And honestly, such a balance sheet is also important for potential investors or other funders, for example. To a bank, a balance sheet is more respected because that is the standard format they are familiar with, and they can analyze your financial statements much better than an income surplus calculation. So if you work a lot with banks and investors, you should consider whether the work is really worth it. Basically, as a balance sheet preparer, I would strongly recommend working with a professional, such as a tax advisor. You might think, yes, perfect, I have two ways to determine my profit. 
One quick and easy, and one more elaborate but more professional, so I can choose. Regrettably not, or not consistently, due to legal regulations determining when a balance sheet must be prepared. And whenever you have to prepare a balance sheet, you do not get to choose, you have to create one. However, if there is no legal obligation and you are allowed to do an income surplus calculation, you can also voluntarily opt for the more complex version and still prepare a balance sheet. It is relatively straightforward with GMBHs or UGs, that is with corporations, because corporations always have to prepare a balance sheet. Regardless of the amount of revenue or profit they generate, they always have to prepare a balance sheet. With sole proprietorships, one needs to examine more closely. For freelancers, it's also relatively simple because it doesn't matter how much profit or revenue they make, they never have to create a balance sheet. Freelancers can always prepare an income surplus calculation and only if they want to, then they can also create a balance sheet. For business owners, it is a bit more complicated because they have the ability to create an income surplus calculation only up to certain revenue or profit limits. And if they exceed these limits, they are also required to prepare a balance sheet. These limits represent the maximum profit per annum and revenue in the year. It is absolutely sufficient if either of these limits is exceeded or surpassed during the specified time period. This implies that in the event that you generate a profit as a business proprietor, you are required to create a balance sheet, but solely if this occurs for two consecutive years. This implies that if you generate a profit for two successive years as a business proprietor, you will be obligated to create a balance sheet. In actual practice, the tax office will send you a letter to notify you of this requirement. So, it's naturally advantageous for you to know how the whole thing works and maybe already have in mind that it will come your way. But in practice, it always happens that the tax office eventually sends you a letter and says, Dear taxpayer, starting from this date, please prepare a balance sheet. And then you have to adjust your accounting and create double entry bookkeeping, followed by a balance sheet. I hope that with this video, I was able to give you a good initial overview of what simple accounting or income surplus calculation means and the somewhat more complex double entry bookkeeping, also known as accounting or profit and loss statement. If you're uncertain at present about what you truly need to do, how you can determine that, or if you have any additional inquiries about it, please don't hesitate to write us a comment below this video. And if you think that all of this is too complicated for you, that there is too much information, and that a professional should take care of it so you can focus on your business and not your accounting, then I completely understand and you should probably just find a tax advisor. You can locate all details regarding our services and the ways in which we can aid you by clicking on this link. But of course, you can also get to know us a little better first, for example, by watching our other videos like this one or that one.